Hi everyone, and welcome to Noodle Journey. Today I'm excited to review Nissin's Cup Noodle Curry flavor. If you didn't watch my review of Nissin's Cup Noodle seafood flavor way back in episode 11, I got into the hows and whys of why this is called Cup Noodle versus Cup Noodles versus Cup O Noodles, so check that out for what I learned. Here we have another one of the popular Japanese flavors brought across the Pacific to tantalize us in the curry flavor. Sort of. This is actually manufactured in America, even though it is one of the Japanese flavors, and I learned recently that Nissan has dubbed this small product line as Global Favorites here in the USA, along with the seafood flavor and the original flavor. It is not an import product, even though it seems like it should be. I love Japanese curry sauce. I buy and cook with Vermont curry roux blocks frequently, uh, and yes, despite it being called Vermont, it is very much a Japanese product for convoluted reasons that you can read about online. But I love the flavor profile and texture the Japanese curry has. Typically, it's a thick, silky sauce with some sweetness going on among the spices, usually from honey or fruit, and it's generally not very spicy even when it says hot on the package. Great stuff if you ever get the chance to buy it. And also buying it as roux cubes makes it really easy to cook with. Like ridiculously easy if you want to make your own homemade Japanese curry dishes. But I digress. Nissen has apparently packaged that Japanese curry experience into this cup. From what I've learned, and from what the creamiest curry blurb on the top here implies, when you cook this, it should turn into more of a sauce than a soup which is exactly the kind of experience you would want with this. This should be fairly easy to find for purchase. Your local Asian market may have this, as will Walmart and some other online storefronts. Expect to pay anywhere from $1.50 to $2.50 or so per cup. There's also a larger version of this cup imported from Japan with the word BIG emblazoned on the front of it, but I personally haven't seen that in the wild, so just buy two of these if you're hungry. This seems to go in and out of stock on Amazon all the time, so you might be better off going to a brick and mortar store, assuming there isn't a supply chain issue. But when it is on Amazon, you can grab a six pack for around 12 bucks. Uh, what else can I say? 1450 milligrams of sodium in here, which isn't terrible, especially if you do want an extra serving of this. There's a ton of ingredients in here, but it's super important to note that this contains a lot of animal products, some of which may surprise you. There's powdered chicken, beef stock and fat, Parmesan cheese, and dried pork in this. Wow. Since this was manufactured in America, it doesn't get tossed in the trash by the USDA when they see all that meat listed. I believe the pork in here is the famous Nissen mystery meat that you may have heard about online, but that is a conversation for the next episode because I'm already talking way too much. Uh, just to mention, there is also some dried potato, carrot, and green onion in this to spruce it up. Let's pop this open so we can get it cooked. Now, this product is microwavable, but remember that not all cup noodle products are, so please always check the instructions first. So we took the lid off. We're going to shake this thing as well as you can to expose all the noodles, um, which is kind of impossible because it looks like that powder is stuck. We're just going to add room temperature water to the fill line, microwave this for two and a half minutes uncovered, and then let it stand another minute. Then we're going to stir it all up and serve. All right, let's get this all stirred up for the best possible experience here. That is still very soupy. Not quite the creamy consistency that the package said it should be. I'm actually going to let this sit just a little bit longer. Also, it's still molten hot. Like, I can feel it burning through the sides of the styrofoam here. All right, I just let this sit for another couple minutes. Um, I mean, maybe it thickened up a little bit, but not exactly what I would expect. But uh, I also don't want this to get cold or mushy, so let's taste right now.
Okay. I think I got a little bit of everything there. Um, so this is not spicy at all. If you are one of those people who find curries to have a pungent taste, I would say that this might hit your taste buds as a 1 out of 10 on the spiciness scale. But for most people, this is going to be a complete zero. As far as the noodles, these are still your average, ordinary cup noodle noodles. I don't love them, but they're better than my memory thinks they were 20 years ago. They're thin with an average chew, and to their credit, they haven't gotten mushy yet, but still they're just okay. Uh, so they're a 5 out of 10. You kind of have to look at Cup Noodles noodles as a vehicle for the rest of the content, and not much else. They're just not the star of the show most of the time, and that is true here. But let's talk about the flavor and all the add-ins in here. Uh, impressive. Putting aside the average noodles, this is an unexpectedly complex product, just like that seafood cup was. The potato that I tasted rehydrated excellently and tasted like a fresh potato. The few bits of mystery meat that were in here have a great bite and a slightly fatty finish, very sausage-like. I noticed that the carrots and onions kind of got lost in here due to the other textures and flavors happening. The sauce has a perfectly sweet curry flavor. I'm finding cinnamon and fenugreek, I think, to be the most prominent spices to my palate. There's not really any fruity flavor to speak of, and there's no mention of fruit in the ingredients, but there is molasses in here that I can kind of taste that's working well with everything without making it cloying. Um, now the bad news. This is still not very, what I would call, creamy or sauce-like. I used the recommended amount of water, and I feel like it's still a little too watery even after I let it sit. I almost wanted to try adding a small slurry, but I don't know if that would dilute the flavor or skew this review. The only thing I can think of is if you have some leftover rice and maybe want to toss a scoop of that in here to suck up some of the sauce, that would be a decent option. Otherwise, it is what it is. So I'm going to dock a point for the noodles overall because they're not my favorite and a point for the consistency of the sauce because I don't think it's exactly what was promised. Uh, but that still makes this an 8 out of 10 overall. Those two complaints aside, this is quite good. If you want some quick, delicious Japanese-style curry noodles and can forgive the noodle quality and the soup slash sauce consistency and thickness, this is a great cheap option. The flavor of that broth and the quality of the dry ingredients really elevates this into something special, even if the consistency could be just a little bit better. This is definitely getting some dedicated room in my pantry from now on. I've got the last flavor of the American-made Global Favorites cup noodle coming up, the original flavor uh, that is queued up for the next video. So please be on the lookout for that if that interests you. In the meantime, if you've had this or other Japanese curry products, please let me know what you think in the comments. If you have a favorite cup noodles product that I need to review, please let me know that too. Until next time, remember to like and subscribe to continue on this noodle journey with me.